Hi, it's Mike from Pro Tools Expert, and this is the first in a series of three videos looking at the ways to use Waves Max Bass, Renaissance Bass, and Low Air plugins in audio post production. But in this first video, we're going to concentrate on the Max Bass plugin. Max Bass is a very versatile plugin. Essentially, it has an algorithm that takes the original low frequency bass audio, as shown under this blue line, and then creates harmonics, sounds that are higher in frequency, and then you can mix them back in. And the harmonics are shown by this yellow area here. Now, the advantage of this is that the harmonics are a higher frequency, and so will reproduce better on smaller speakers, which makes it a great tool if you need to prepare audio to replay on installations where the speakers can often have less than ideal bass reproduction. But MaxBase is also a great tool for increasing the perceived bass in sounds destined for any reproduction system. One of the jobs I use MaxBase for is to enhance the sound of voiceovers, especially in trailers and promos and music documentaries. Here's a clip of a recent Pro Tools Expert podcast where Ross is talking about the Waves DigiGrid. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the DigiGrid system. So now take a listen to this. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the DigiGrid system. So there we go. No EQ per se. The MaxBase plugin is creating harmonics and adding those to the original sound. So let's take a look at the plugin in a little bit more detail. So we've got three faders here in the sort of mix section. The input level, so we can bring down the input level. The original bass level, and you can see that in the display that is also represented. So we can adjust the level of the original bass in the sound. And then we can also adjust the level of the new harmonics. Then over here, we have the crossover frequency. So we can determine the frequencies below which max bass will create harmonics and then where they get put. And then above, we can use this decay control to tame down the higher harmonics. If we want some of the higher harmonics to display, we can up the decay level. And if we just want small amounts of the harmonics, just the first few, then we can bring the decay down. And at the other end, we can change the slope of the filter. So we can have 6 dB per octave, so the harmonics will come much further down. And then if we don't want that to happen, we can use the 24 dB per octave, and the harmonics will only extend down a little bit. So lots of control. We can also com effectively compress the harmonics. So we can use a small compressor within the plugin to compress the harmonics. We can reduce the dynamic range of the harmonics, make them even thicker. So lots of different options. So we can also monitor the mixed audio. Waves already have a presence with what Max Bass is adding to it and the original bass. Are with waves to and again, those options are really useful for just determining exactly what MaxBase is doing. Another thing I use MaxBase for is giving sound effects that are lacking in low end some more low end impact. Take a listen to this gunshot sound effect. Now that may well be a realistic recording of a gunshot, but so often in storytelling, whether it's radio, TV or film, we often enhance reality. And then there's sometimes we do it so often that we actually don't believe this recording is real because it doesn't sound like the, all the gunshots that we hear in films and dramas. And so I will often turn to Max Bass to help me out. So you can see that I brought up the max bass output, but it isn't that effective. But of course, there isn't a huge amount of low frequency in the original recording. So let's just play the original bass. 
So by bringing the crossover control, the frequency control, up quite a bit, let's have another listen. So that's now picked up quite a lot more of the low frequency element. So let's take a listen and see how that works with the full audio. So before, after, so much better. And of course, again, I could choose to compress the harmonics or indeed add some of the low frequency in. So you can see how adjusting that high pass has now given me a lot more low end. But you'll notice here that it started clipping. So I can bring down the input level a little bit. Just clear the clip indicator. And there we are. We're good to go. So how about machine guns? So let's just take that down again. And let's just play this machine gun here. So again, it's a little bit feeble. So let's have a listen to the original bass. So probably somewhere about there. So now let's uh, go back to the full audio and we'll start mixing in the harmonics. That's so much better. So if that's what you need, a much more thicker, deeper sound for your gunshots, then MaxBase is a great tool to achieve that. Now we can use MaxBase to a similar effect on explosions. So let's take a look at this one. Just hit the bypass button. And now let's add MaxBase in. So again, we've got some clipping. So what I'm going to do here is actually reduce the clip gain in Pro Tools. Just cancel the clip indicator. There we go, that's much better. So again, we can adjust the high pass filter. We can also increase the decay. Some of the high frequency harmonics will come through. And then we perhaps just adjust the original bass. So before, after, so there we go. Another example of being able to enhance sound effects. Now the last area that I want to take a look at is this area of preparing content to be played back over small speaker systems, whether it's an exhibition or a laptop. You can effectively extend the range of that system by replacing most of the original bass with the max bass signal. Now, because we want to replace most of the original bass, one of the things to do is to actually turn off the original bass. Now, the exact settings in this section really depend on the sort of speaker system you're going to replay it over. And the presets that are in the Waves plugin are a really useful place to start. We've got the multimedia setting. And that's really designed for those little computer speakers, you know, the ones with drivers about three or four inches across. And you can see here that the original bass is completely off altogether. And again, with all of these settings, it is really important that you effectively monitor and mix over the system you're expecting to replay it on, either the exact system or something very, very close. So, for instance, if you were mixing for an exhibition, then what I would do is I would do all the mixing and then go into the exhibition space itself and plug my Pro Tools system into the speaker system and then do the final mix in situ and be able to make these sorts of adjustments in situ monitoring over the playback system. But I'm going to give you some uh, tips and tricks to give you an overview over the sort of things that we can do. So back into the presets. So we've got multimedia for your little computer speakers, the, the add-on speakers. Then we've got PC laptop. So this is really intended for the little speakers that are inside your laptop. And then we've got a boom box. So portable CD players, that sort of thing. And then we've got lo-fi and hi-fi. So your lo-fi system enhancer really is aimed at the sort of low-cost stereos 
or kiosk type systems. And again, if we use that, you'll, again, you'll see that the original base is turned off completely. So let's have a listen to this little mix that I've produced. So firstly, let's just play that in bypass. Waves already have a presence with Digico in the live world, and this was really created for the live world, and now they're kind of porting it over to the studio world as well. Some news is that we're going to be doing a, a webinar with Waves to talk about the Digico system. A couple of other tips if you're producing content for smaller speakers. Use the 24 dB per octave high pass filter. We don't want to extend the harmonics back down into the low frequencies. And it's not bad to consider using a little bit of compression, maybe anything up to sort of two and a half to one would all be very useful. And so depending on your speakers, that's where you'll set your crossover frequency. So the smaller the speaker, so if we go into the preset here and go to PC laptop, you'll see that the frequency is much higher because there is no point in trying to reproduce sounds below what the speaker can reproduce. So all in all, this is a really, really useful plugin for being able to prepare material for smaller speakers and to be able to enhance audio like the voiceover or the sound effects. In the next video in this series, we'll take a look at the Waze Renaissance plugin and see what it has to offer. See you again soon.